<laughs> my old friend and colleague, Brad Friedman, who is the co-founder of Velvet Revolution, velvetrevolution.us, and, and has his own blog and his own radio show, bradblog.com is the website. You can get the information over there. Has uh, pointed out that the Argonne National Laboratory, now this is a, a division of the U.S. Department of Energy. The U.S. Department of Energy if you're not familiar with it, has not a lot to do with energy. The U.S. Department of Energy is not, for example, the agency that oversees our, our coal-fired power plants or even our nuclear power plants. That's the Nuclear Regulatory Commission. U.S. Department of Energy is responsible for making nuclear bombs. And, you know, a few other things like security for our nuclear systems. I mean, we've got nuclear missiles that are computer controlled. And so if you go to their website, their website is, is very simple. It's uh, ne.anl.gov. NE as in nuclear engineering. This is the nuclear engineering division. ANL, uh, uh, the, the Argo National Laboratory, .gov, .gov. Go to their nuclear energy, uh, engineering division and you will see that they have this thing called the Vulnerability Assessment Team. And that right, right here, I'm looking at this government website. The Vulnerability Assessment Team works in the following areas. Vulnerability assessments, tamper and intrusion detection, security countermeasures, tamper and intrusion detection, nuclear safeguards and nonproliferation, vote tampering. Vote tampering? What? Well, as hacktivists, this is, this is where it gets really interesting. As Anonymous has outed a cop in New York for brutally macing peaceful de demonstrators on Wall Street, many people are wondering if they could also hack, I mean, if you, if you can hack a guy's identity, if you can hack the FBI's pages, if you can hack whatever. I mean, they've, they've hacked all kinds of stuff. Could they hack our next election? And now the government wants to know if it's possible. So a team of computer science and security experts working within the Department of Energy, which is the, this, at the Argonne National Laboratory's Nuclear Energy Division, as I, as I, the, the vulnerability assessment team, as I just described to you, says that they have successfully hacked a Diebold electronic voting machine, which, by the way, was provided to them by, by Brad Friedman on loan. They successfully hacked into this Depot electronic voting machine and where they were able to change the voting results without leaving any trace behind. And here's where it gets really bizarre. They were able to do it using $26 worth of equipment that they claim is an eighth, represents an eighth grade level of science understanding. In other words, any eighth grader in a science class could hack a Depot machine. The vulnerability assessment team, as they're called, that performed the hack said, quote, and this, keep in mind, this is your federal government, said, this is a national security issue, end quote. And as my friend and colleague Brad Friedman said, and again, you can read this at bradblog.com, this is one of the most disturbing e-voting machine hacks to date. Nearly every other country in the world has ditched electronic voting, arguing that it's not secure. Yet here in the United States, for some reason, we keep it in place. In fact, next year's election, about 30% of voters will use these very same Diebold e voting machines. So it's no longer about who gets the most votes in our democracy, but which side can hack the vote. Which raises some interesting questions. Maybe you have some thoughts on this or suggestions. What if one of the hacktivist groups hacked the uh, Republican primary coming up or the general election? And all of a sudden, you get 35 million write-in votes for Lady Gaga. And she gets elected president of the United States or Republican candidate. Yeah, I'm pretty sure she's a Democrat. Or what about Scooby-Doo? Man, this is Spooksville. Yeah. Whoa. Whoa. So who, you know, if, if, you, were, if you were running... A serious hacktivist group, and you had decided, you know, just for the hell of it, let's hack the election. After all, the machines are out there; they're hackable. You can do it with, you know, twenty six. The by the way, it was like twelve or thirteen dollars worth of parts to actually hack the voting machine if you walked up to it. 
But if you want to do it by remote control from up to a up to a mile away, it's twenty six dollars worth of parts. These are the private corporate machines that are that are counting our votes. So you combine that with this turning us into a nation of sheeple at the airports, to use Mike Malloy's term. And what do you have? You have elections that get stolen by a variety of means in in Ohio. Ken Blackwell setting things up so that people stand in line in African-American communities for 12 hours in the rain in order to vote in white communities, 10 minutes. You have that. You have electronic voting machine results coming out weird. You get five-point red shifts so bad that the, 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 the uh, networks had to disband their, their uh, exit poll divisions. And a nation that doesn't question it.